Hi out there. I want to welcome everybody to the hopefully the last video of this collection of security. Thank you for joining me at the Yates Computer Tips and Reviews YouTube page. Um, make sure you hit the subscribe, hit the bell, get all the future updates. So this is really one of the big, big, big items that I see still out there today. I know I've mentioned a lot of these key factors in all of these other videos. I think I have about eight or nine of them that are the physical security. The physical as in your hardware, where it's placed, what it is, how it's secure and safe. This one is particularly about the data. This is one of the factors I've seen when I go out and help businesses and I help other things where they give me a call. Hey, can you come out and check this out and check this out? I go in and I see all these other things and I tell them. And most of the time I write it down for them. This is what I see. You may want to look at fixing this, 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 and this, and this. Along it with what they've called me for. One of the biggest ones that I have seen have to do with things like this. A lot of people probably don't even comprehend this as a data breach. What is this device? Is it a CD-ROM? Is it a DVD burner? Is it a DVD-ROM? Is it a CD burner? What is this device that is in that computer? Because if this is any kind of burner, you need to make sure your data is secure. You don't know what someone's doing on that workstation. Nowadays, you don't even need burning software. The operating system will do all of that for you. In the old days, you had to have the burner with the specific software. There was two or three manufacturers, three different, two or three different types, depending on the burner. And you could not mix and match the software due to the burner. Nowadays, pretty much all that's out the window. The operating system can actually do all the burning for you. That is a high security risk. That is something to be concerned about when you're talking about your data security. Is what is this device? If you have a burner in an accounting system, you don't know what data they could be burning to a disk and be taken out. Disks are small. That gets you into the more scarier factors. In the old days, you had little things like floppy drives. Those were small, compact, but they didn't hold a lot of data. A lot of systems that I've gone in and see, they still have floppy drives in them. The key security part to that is go in, pull the cables off of them so they're not active. Because depending on the unit, some of them have a bay in there that you can't really interchange. Some of them you can take out and put a panel in. But the panels are hard to find. You can leave the physical device, just unplug it so they can't physically use it. That secures your data. Um, this is really what you should be using to secure your data. Someone wants to make a copy of something, has the USB cable integrated into it so you don't lose it, it's nice. You go, you plug that in to the computer, transfer whatever data you need to the disk, and then you have that information and you know who's doing what. If you want to get particular, you can log it, you can do all kinds of information. So you have records of what is going on in your business. Who is copying this data? Copying data is really a hard thing to track. Especially if it's on an end user computer that's pulling data from a server and you've got all kinds of other things going on. As an IT person, you might not be able to track this very well. It might not be one of your high priorities. It should be one of your high priorities because not only theft of your physical device is they can always clone it, copy it. 
What's scarier is nowadays you have USB drives that are huge, huge, and they're like this big. I see them online, they're like the little tongles for the USB. Little tiny, tiny things that anybody can sneak in and plug in. There's features in the motherboard. You can disable USB ports, disable front USB, disable, you know, whatever you need to do. That is a security feature you may need to look at. You may want to look at. I know in some areas where people go in, there are better security policies and procedures. Like if they bring a bag in, it has to be a clear bag so they could see everything in the bag. Well, if you got a little tiny USB about yay big, or even a standard USB, you can hide those in almost anything. You can wrap them up in a Kleenex. You get plain white generic USB, wipe it up in a Kleenex, you're not going to see it. These are factors that I mentioned in all my past videos, is you've got to be careful because it could be a disgruntled worker or someone who's unhappy with your business that could do these things that you may not be aware of. Even as a home user, you might have someone that comes in and tries to take your data because they know they can sell it on the black market, dark web, whatever terms you want to use to get money for that data is a scary factor nowadays that that data could be worth a lot of money. That's one thing even I have a hard time contemplating nowadays is that data is worth so much. In the old days, they used to steal your computer, your desktop, your laptop because the laptop was worth so much and they could use it. Now it's they're selling your data that the laptop or whatever they stole is not even worth pennies compared to what they could get depending on what data is on there. So it changes some of the factors nowadays on really where you need to look because, it, you know, encryption is really another factor now because of all of these things that I just mentioned. You hear about it in government movies. You hear about it in spy things. All these things about how they encrypt their data. So other people can't retrieve it. Can't see it. These are factors that may end up bleeding or transferring into the home environment. Due to all of this stuff that's going on. It's crazy out there. That where the technology is gone and what they redeem more valuable. So that's what all these videos are about is the physical security. The physical security of your data, your network, all of that is all the same thing. Keeping whatever information you have on this safe. Even servers. Servers are pretty much, some servers are very breachable, especially the new ones. The new ones have the drives in the front with a quick release that are supposed to be hot swappable. So if one goes down, you can pull it out, put a new one in. You don't have to do too much. Scary factor is anybody could go pull that out. That's why I have the other videos talking about where to place those servers, how to place them to keep them secure, to keep that data safe. All of those other videos are referring to this stuff. So this is really the last key part to understand what you are trying to keep secure. Keeping this secure is important because you're keeping this secure. Why is that important? Because you need to keep this secure 
so you can keep your data secure that's on that. So it's a whole complex domino effect. You need to keep your network secure. You need to keep your router secure. You need to keep your internet secure. You got to keep all those physical devices secure to keep that data secure. I hope that explains all of those videos. So now that you've seen this and hopefully you understand what all of those videos are about, you can go back and re-watch all those videos. Understand that that's how important all of these steps are to keep this secure. Other key factor I brought up, I don't know how well I hammered it in on my backup videos about having it in two physical locations. I've mentioned make a backup of like your photos and stuff and you can keep it you know on top of your computer and stuff that's one thing. Photos are one thing when you get into your data tax returns all the other personal data secure it. Do not leave that drive laying around. Even though I'm saying that now you can leave that drive out with your photos because it's easier for you to back up your photos and do other things. But I want to point out the security concern that someone might steal that drive because they think you have your personal info on there. So that makes that drive more valuable to someone to steal, to take, because they think you have something on there that might be valuable to them. So that's why I always say make sure you have that backup in more than one place. Because if someone steals that drive and you can't find it, and you can go out and buy a drive for 40 or 50 bucks to replace it, that's okay. It's only your photos that you already have. <coughs> Excuse me. On this device, that's a backup. You have your originals. You can clone over, copy, do what you need to to have another backup in case this drive fails or whatever you need to do. You can always have another full backup of all your data and all your photos secure and locked away. Hidden. Someplace someone can't find it. Locked away is always best. That was what all the other videos was about. Explaining how to do these things. The best practices on these things. I know I hammered this in and I hammered it in. But I wanted to actually show how this is important. This is securing your data. Your info. That everybody wants. Later on. I will do end up doing videos on firewalls, your virus scans, all of that data, data protection from the internal sides of the equipment. Switches, firewalls, uh, routers have a lot of these features you can enable. A router may have a firewall in it. The other video I brought up, the wireless. Wireless is also another possible data breach point. Making sure you have all this stuff secure protects your data. The physical, the physical stuff. When you get into configurations, your security passwords, logins, all of these things are very important to securing your data. Um, I don't want to go into two more videos of this, but this one is to make sure you understand the video in between those of my old computer, my first computer to parts. Why I put it there is so everybody is aware of how easy it really is to take these things apart. How easy it is. Like this model, I took, you take the top off, the drive was right on top. A lot of computers, the drives are right here. Some of them that I 
work on have little quick releases. You unplug the two cables, push the two quick releases, that drives out. There are other forms and other ways to get that data. Hook it up to another computer, set it up as a secondary drive. I've showed you on the IED cables. Now there's the two, you know, I'll get into more of that with the new technology by having two different cables, two different drives, boot orders in your BIOS, boot up. Once Windows is loaded, they can see what's on that drive. This is how we used to recover a lot of data from people when their drives failed, when their OS's failed. This is the way we repaired them. Get their data, get them back up and running. These aren't secrets. Everybody out there on the web knows about these things. I don't want to get into the secret ways of doing these things. There are software. There's an out there to retrieve stuff. There's cloning software. There's all kinds of software out there that can get data. They were designed to help you as a home user, but of course, everybody's doing it for illegal purposes. So, that's why these videos are here because this has become a big big thing and I've heard so much about it and this is really where you need to have a security expert in your business to evaluate a lot of your security not only your IT guy not only your web design guy not only you know your network guy these are key educational levels that everybody needs to be in as a home user these are important for you to know so that your data is secure that in case your computer crashes in case you have to buy a new computer because the operating system is too old and you need to buy a new one to get the new operating system because there's been a few times where you went from one edition to the other edition where you cannot upgrade, you had to do a clean install and then put all your games and data and all this stuff back in and your programs all back into the new operating system because they weren't transferable. These are all key factors that will help you if you have that backup and you have everything and you go to work on this system and for some reason, it crashes, it won't work, it totally wipes out all your data, you have that backup. That is a data practice that you should always have. So, since this video is on the data, I want to secure, make sure everybody's aware of that. Make sure your data is secure. Because you don't know what happens if this device fails in that unit, in your server... And you have that server set up to clone this device and you get a virus or something that affects that device and causes it to crash and it clones <laughs> to the other drive <coughs> that affects the other drive too. Well, you thought you had redundancy. Your data's gone on two drives. You need your backup. That's an independent, separate then this gets back to backing up. You may want to have more backups done. If you have a daily backup done, a weekly backup done, <coughs> if you have a daily backup, how many of those daily backups do you save? Do you keep one backup of the daily backup? Do you keep two daily daily backups? Do you keep three? Do you keep a week's worth, seven days? Do you keep 14 days? Do you keep 30 days of backups? This is where your data security comes in. Because, here's the kicker. You get a virus, malware, whatever that affects that drive. When did you get it? When did that go in there? You know when the drive failed. It failed on the 14th of the month. How long did that take for that malware to take effect and do what it needed to do? You may need to recover 30 days 
to get that system back up. Killer is, is you lost 30 days of data? No. You might be able to report, pull your databases off and restore your databases, but you have your actual OS and other factors back before the major effect happened. So, I hope that explains a lot of the data. I know I just threw a lot out right here at the end, but I wanted to sum all this up. <coughs> wanted to show everybody physical, physical security. Knowing what's in that computer, DVD drive, burner, whatever, USB ports, firewire, whatever anybody can plug into. Knowing and having everybody know a policy. Can they bring USB drives in from home? Can they plug USB drives in? Can they... I've seen people doing things that I've brought up and nobody really cares because it hasn't affected them yet. It's their business. They can do what they want. They brought me in. I gave them my best recommendations. It's up to them to follow. As a home user, these are recommendations to you too. Having one of your friends come over, put something in your computer, you may not want. Is there DVD? Is there USB or anything affected? Does it have something on it that might corrupt your data? That's a factor you want to look at. Someone that comes repairs your computer. Make sure you know who they are. When they plug something in, that you know it's good and it's clean and you protect your data. Have a backup. Protect your data. So, these are all factors I brought up in all these other videos. This should sum it all up. Make sure you hit the subscribe, the bell, you know the deal. Comment. I will have more videos out. I will have some stuff floating around on TikTok. I don't know if anybody's seen it. Referring them here. Got a lot of stuff going on. Trying to get some buzz going. It's up to you. Get the buzz going. Tell your friends. Tell everybody you know. Check out my YouTube. Hit subscribe. Hit the bell. Get